Hi everyone, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play the Doctor Who collectible card game. Now, if you've never heard of this, this came out in 1996 in the UK. Um, I think it was a release overseas as well. Um, I've seen boxes on eBay from American things. So you can still get hold of it on eBay. Not as uh, widely available as um, some popular, more popular CCGs, um, but it's still out there. So it was released in 60 card starter decks, which looks like that. And they also released uh, booster packs, which were 12 cards. Uh, these were released by MMG. So I'm going to do a quick overview of the game and the set, because there was only one set ever released. Um, and then I'll show you a quick how to play um, with some of the rules. Um, obviously it's not going to be every single rule, um, obviously things will crop up as you play. Um, the rules um, for this game, the rule book wasn't brilliant. Um, there were a few rules that uh, required more um, thinking because the rule book didn't go into great detail about certain things. The one off the top of my head is um, the episode card solving episodes, but I'll go through that when I show you the gameplay. So I'll just show you some of the cards, the card types first. Okay, so quickly, this is the starter deck. That's what the starter deck looks like. Then we have the booster pack, 12 cards. That's what the boost pack looks like. Um, that's the back of the cards. They all have the same design on. So the card types in this game, you have um, creatures. These can be timeless creatures, which are white bordered. So you can see it's the doctors there. Then we have past time zone creatures, which are green. Then we have red creatures, which are present creatures from the present time zone. The last creature type is blue, which are future time zone creatures. Then you have episode cards. So you'll see popular episode um, or stories, should I say. Um, depicted on these episode purple episode cards. So, example, you've got Robots, Ark in Space, Genesis of the Daleks. So, really popular stories. You do get an odd few that aren't popular. Um, but as this came out in 1996, um, there are quite a few Sylvester McCoy ones, which I find brilliant because I love Sylvester McCoy. He's my favourite Doctor. Um, so, they are Ghost Light at Curse Fenric, which pleases me a lot. Um, then you have grey ones, grey border cards. These are resources, so they're um, like equipment or things like force fields, um, even things like uh, Fenric's flask from the Curse of Fenric, TARDIS obviously, um, Kinder Jahan's box. So it's like equipment and things you would use and then we have yellow border cards. These are flash cards. Um, in comparison to other games, they're called interrupts in other games. So they play immediately and have a quick effect on the game. There's quite a few of those and not all of them are useful. Then the only other types of cards you have are watcher cards. These um, circular type watchers they're called. Um, you start the game with each player, there's two players obviously, each player has one of each time zone, so past, present and future. Then your lives in the game are depicted by these time cards. Um, again, green for past, red for present and blue for future. Um, at the back of my folder I have a few signed cards, I will do a whole video about my sign cards because I've got a lot more than just these ones. Um, I've got a lot that I haven't put away in my folder so I need to put them away first and then I will do a proper video for them but that's a quick sneak peek. So back to the game. I've created two decks. 
two draw decks. These consist of the same amount of cards for each player, usually 60 cards, but obviously you can play more as long as you've both got the same number of cards. Um, I've done two decks, they're exactly the same cards in each deck. Um, then you have your pile of time cards, um, which are your lives. So I've done two piles each for those and three watches. So each player has in this game six lives. The longer you want the game, just put in more time cards. So you could have three of each if you want to make it a really long game. Um, but six is average. Um, then obviously, as I said, each player starts with one of each watcher card. That denotes the time zone area of play. Well, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, first, a couple of things about this game um, that a bit niggly. Um, the first thing being there's no good side and bad side. Um, so what's really stupid is you can have obviously assistants battling on alongside enemies from the episodes. Um, so like you could have John Pertwee fighting with a white Dalek against Sarah Jane and a Yeti, for example. Obviously, the best thing to get around this is to tailor your decks so you only have good side and bad side cards. Obviously, you'd have to um, discuss with your opponent whether you wanted to do this or not. Um, but that's the way to get around it. But for this demonstration, I'm just using two decks that have got the same cards in each deck and they're just going to play against each other. Obviously, um, on some of the character cards, the creature cards, should I say, um, if you can see that on here, it says unique. This unique trait is obviously on named characters as like doctors and assistants, they all say unique, unique. This means that only one of these cards can be in play on the whole play area. So if you've got Ace in play, your opponent can't play Ace. But the only exception to this is Doctor cards. Um, because the Doctor cards are Doctor well, and a number, so Steve Peter Davison is Doctor 5. I This is another rule that we did with my friends, but because of episodes like the five doctors, obviously you could have five doctors wandering around. So as long as you've only got one of each doctor number in play, so doctor five can be in play and doctor one can be in play in the same side and on the opponent's board, etc. So um, that's a way to get around with multiple doctors, but obviously you both couldn't have like doctor one in play. Um, so I think that's the basics of the cards. Um, I'll just shuffle this one. Yeah, so that's the basics. I'll set up the play area now and I'll show you how to set the game up. So this is the rule book showing you how to set up the play area. I've done that on the table here. So you have your draw decks and one in the other corner there. Then each player has their stack of six time cards, which is their lives. Then each player has the time zone set out with the watcher cards. So past, present and future. So first things first, um, each player turns over their life cards, or time cards I'll call them, because that's what they're called. So the opposing player has the future time zone. Now this card here, denotes what is called the chosen time zone. So um, it gives you benefits if you choose this um, zone to play in for your turn. So I'll just do my time card. And my chosen time zone is the past zone. Okay, a couple of things I forgot to mention about deck formation. Um, the There cannot be more than four identical cards um, of the same card name in each deck. Um, there can also be the episode cards. Um, they have numbers which are called solve numbers on the purple episode cards. Um, they totals cannot exceed 25. 
when I get an episode card out of the draw deck, I'll show you the solved number. But those totaled up in your draw deck can't exceed 25. Um, so we've set up the areas with the time zones. We now have to draw seven cards from our draw deck and that forms our hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what have we got? Uh, this, <laughs> this is an episode card, this is what I was just talking about. So these numbers next to the episode here is the solve number. So the total number in your deck can't exceed 25. Okay, so let's see what other cards we have in our hand. We have a white Dalek, which is a timeless creature. Morgane, which is a present creature. Zoe Herriot, future creature. Unit Soldier, Stephen Taylor. Tegan Jovanka. So a lot of assistance <laughs> in this starting hand. So I'll just pop these down here and I'll draw the opponent's hand. So the opponent has a past creature, Terralyptals, Ace, Doctor Who number five, Doctor Who number one, Daleks, Bok, and Liz Shaw. So a nice bundle of character, uh, creature cards for the opponent. So I'm going to start my turn first. There's no um, particular way of choosing who goes first. You just choose between yourselves however you want to do it. So let's just see the anatomy of a creature card, first of all. So, you see three numbers on here. We have an energy value, substance value, and a support value. The energy and substance are what denotes the character's uh, creature's life, and you will use these values when you're battling. If at any time both these numbers reach zero, the creature card is discarded because they've technically died and they've run out of energy etc. Um, I'll go into the support values in more detail and what you need to, what you can use the support for in a bit. So let's go through the phases of the turn. So if you, I don't know if you can see this down here we have the preparation phase, the episodes phase, combat phase, bonus and the normalize phase. So phase one, part A, you stand your cards. Now when you um, play abilities on creatures you'll see this infinity symbol next to things. That's called siding. Um, if you're familiar with things like magic it's called tapping where you rotate the cards 90 degrees to have an effect. It's called siding and standing. So siding and standing in this game. Um, so you stand all your creatures and resources. You choose a time zone. So you choose which time zone you want to play in, past, present or future. If you choose the past or you choose your chosen time zone here, so if you choose the past, um, you get to do an extra action. So you can either play an extra card or you can draw an extra card at the end of your turn. So we're going to choose a time zone. I'm not going to choose the past because I don't have any green past creatures. I am going to choose the present, I think. So next, we draw one card from your draw deck, which we have a Vervoids. Then part D is the play creature and resource cards. So you can either choose to play a card or you can proceed to the next phase if you don't want to play a card. Now, the maximum number of creatures and or resources in each time zone is six. Now this is another limitation of the game which I don't particularly like, but it's in the rules so we have to adhere to it. So in each time zone, you can only have six creature cards. This is uh, classed as a creature as well, the watcher card. So we're going to play a card. There's no costs involved. They're all the same. You just play one card and you have to play them a card to their respective time zone. 
So you have to play present creatures in the present time zone, etc. There are ways, obviously, using TARDISes and other cards where you can move time travel, basically, between the zones. But for now, we're going to play Morgane, who is a, a three energy, one substance character with a uh, creature with two support. So she has a special ability which you decide to use about adding substance to any creature. Obviously, we don't want to do that at the moment, so we'll just put her in the present time zone. Another rule is you can't side a creature in the turn it was played. So um, you can't side it to use its special abilities. Um, you can't side it to, to battle because you have to side a main creature to do an attack against your opponent. So basically creatures can't attack in the turn that they get played. They can't use their abilities in the turn they get played. The only thing they can do in the turn they get played is use their support value to support another creature. But I'll go into that in more detail in, in the battle phase because that's involved battling. So the next um, thing we need to do is the episode phase, phase two. So we have an episode card in our hand here. Um, now we can only play episode cards if the opponent has at least one creature in each of their time zones other than the watcher. So we can't do that at the moment. So we're going to just skip the episode phase and I'll go over that later. Next is the combat phase. Again, we can't combat because Morgane has only just um, been played to this time zone. We could use the Watcher to battle, but it's a draw, as you can see, and I haven't got any cards that will help it. So there's no point even doing a battle. So I'm going to skip the combat phase and I'll go over that later. Then after combat we have phase 4, which is the bonus phase, so if you've chosen this bonus time zone, so if I'd chosen past, I could now draw an extra card if I didn't play an extra card in my playing phase. Um, but obviously I'm not in my chosen time zone, so I can't play, uh, draw an extra card. Then we have phase 5, which is normalise which basically means all the creatures revert back to their core values, which are the values written on the cards. Obviously, you can modify them during the turn. They now revert back to what they are on the cards. All the special abilities that have been activated during the turn, um, they finish. And any flash cards played during the turn, the effects of those are finished as well. Um, so other than that, that's one turn. Obviously, I haven't explained all the battling and everything, but I'll just go ahead and play the opponent's turn, and we'll see what happens then. So this is the opponent's hand. The um, bonus time zone is future at the moment. I'm not going to choose future because I don't have any future creatures, although I could play the, the timeless ones in the future because these white-bordered ones you can play in any zone. Um, but I'm going to choose the present just to get the game going. I'm going to play Ace. So it's turning into Battlefield <laughs> with Ace and more game in the present. So what else have we got to do? So play a card. Um, I haven't chosen my bonus time zone so I can't play two cards. Um, I don't want to play episode cards because I haven't got any um, I can't battle really because I've only got the Watcher I can use. I can't side Ace because I've only just deployed her. Um, so then we have the bonus zone, uh, bonus phase, which I haven't chosen, and Normalize, which is nothing. So, very quick turn. Next turn for me. So I'm going to concentrate on the present. So I'm going to choose the present zone. Draw a card another future creature. So I'm going to play a unit soldier and next phase is the episode phase I can't do because they haven't got a card in each zone. 
other than the watcher. So now we're going to do a combat. So combat must be announced and you become the attacker and the opponent becomes the defender. The attacker must now choose a standing creature in the chosen time zone to be their main combatant and announce this. So I'm going to choose Morgane as my main combatant. Uh, the attacker may now choose a defender's standing creature as the defender's main combatant and must announce which has been chosen. I'm going to choose the Watcher because it's the weakest character um, and I should be able to defeat it. Okay, do, do, do the I don't have to choose a character, I can let the opponent choose if I want. They don't have to choose, if they don't want to defend, they don't have to. Um, but I'm going to, def I'm going to actually choose a card. If for any reason I let the opponent choose which card they want to use as a defender and they didn't want to defend, which is their right, they don't have to defend if they don't want to, they can just leave their cards as they are and not choose a defender, then they would take one hit because basically I wouldn't have any opposition to attack the opponent. So they would take a hit. Now a hit is when you discard the top time card and you draw another one. So basically you lose a life. But for this battle, I've chosen a creature. So the attacker must now attempt to destroy the defender's main combatant. And the defender must either try to repel the attack or destroy the attacker's main combatant. So the outcome of the battle is decided by which main combatant has the greater energy and substance values. The values of energy and substance in combat are not used to damage but as degrees of strength with the stronger being the winner. So at the moment, as it stands, we have Morgane who has three energy, one substance. The Watcher has one energy, one substance. So my aim is to be greater than one and one on both of these numbers. Now to help me out, we have a support value. This is a number of other creatures with a support value that can help Morgane in this battle. I have a unit soldier. This creature has a 1 for a, for a support value, which means they can add that 1 to either the energy or substance of the main combatant. So, to do that, I side this card and add their one or whichever value is on the card to one of these. So I will choose to put it onto the substance to make it 3, 2. Therefore, the watcher is going to be defeated because this watcher has a support value of zero. This means that no other creature can support it and it can't support other creatures. So it's helpless. <laughs> that means my three and two beats its one and one, which means it's killed and it's discarded. At the end of a battle, the main combatant that, that survives gets sided, which means they can't do anything else. So after combat, we have bonus phase, which again I can't use because I didn't choose the pass zone, and the normalised phase, which means all values go back to normal. So Morgane's 3-2 goes back to her 3-1 printed on the card. And that's a turn. So I'll play the opponent's turn. So no sided cards on this side. So then we just draw a card. Uh, well, I need to choose a time zone, don't I? I'm going to choose the present again. Draw a card. The card I drew was K9. So I'm going to play Doctor Who number 5 to this time zone. Now, I could 
do a battle, which I think I will, because there's a watcher which is standing, which means I can attack it, and Ace can battle because she was put in play on the previous turn. So, same again, we have Ace, which is a, she's a 2-1, so 2 energy, 1 substance. And I'm choosing the Watcher as defending main combatant, which has a 1-1. One, one. Again, Ace has a 1 value here. Now, although Doctor Who was played on my turn here, the only thing he can be sided to do is help out in a battle with his support value. So I'm going to support Ace with Doctor Who by giving her 3 added to her substance. So she becomes a 2-4 creature, beating the Watcher and killing it. So let's discard it. So both Doctor Who and Ace are sided because they both battled. And that's that turn because I didn't choose the future so I can't draw another card. So my turn again. So we have the preparation phase which starts with standing all sided creatures. Then we have choosing a time zone. Um, now the opponent is very weak in the present now because he has got no creatures to stop any attacks against him. So although I've got loads of future creatures and I could start a battle, in, well I'll start building up my forces in the future, I'm going to con concentrate on the present and kill off a life. First I will play a white Dalek, then I will initiate a combat with more gain against the opponent. The opponent hasn't got anything to stop me, there's no creatures that I can choose as a defender. They haven't got any flash cards or anything to stop an attack. So there's nothing stopping it hitting the opponent and causing a hit, which means the top card is discarded and a new bonus time zone is chosen. Now, for example, this was again a future one that would create a double hit, which means that card is discarded straight away and another time card is turned over, which is a bit of a peril if you don't shuffle your time cards properly. <laughs> but um, that's what happens. So we'll do that. So I've had a hit, more gain sides because she was the main combatant. And that's the end of my turn. So the, you can see that's how the game plays. Obviously the next turn, they stand draw a card, I'd probably play K9 and then launch an attack in the present again. Um, but that's basically how it works. I know it's quite complicated to explain this game, it's not a very straightforward game, mainly because these rules are, this rule book is appalling, it's the worst rule book I've ever read for a card game. The only good thing about it is it gives an example game at the end where it shows what well, goes through a few turns. If it didn't have that example game in the back, I don't think I would ever understand how to play the game. Um, the only other thing I need to show you is how episode cards work. So I'm going to quickly set up um, some cards on the playing area. Right, now, I need to explain episode cards. Episode cards come into play later in the game. So, see here, I've got a game in progress. Um, there's cards in every zone, other than watcher cards. Um, so, yeah, so this will be a game after probably like 10 turns, maybe longer. 
Um, so, episode cards you play during the episode phase, which comes after the preparation phase. So you draw uh, standard creatures, draw cards, obviously you've chosen the time zone already. For this turn, we'll say the chosen time zone is the present time zone. Um, and then we play an episode card on the opponent. So I'll just read this episode card out to you. So this episode is Ghost Light. All solvers, humans in this zone, are sided. They remain sided and take no further part in the game until the episode is solved. So, when you play this an episode card, it goes on the opponent's side of the game. That means they are called the solver, because it's on their side and they have to solve the episode, and any references to the opponent in the game text, refer to yourself who played the card. So, play an episode card, which I've done, I've put it in the present zone, which is the zone we're in for this turn. Um, it can be placed in, an um, episode card can be placed in any time zone. It's always placed on the opponent's side, and no more than one episode card is allowed in each player's side of a time zone. So you could have one episode on my side and one episode on the other side. The effect generated by an episode card does not occur immediately, but only occurs in your opponent's turn if your opponent is unable to solve it in 2B, which is the next stage, but obviously that doesn't take effect till the other player's turn. So, for the sake of this turn, I've played it, nothing else happens until the opponent's turn. So I'll just close off this turn, pretend that's the end of my turn. It's now the opponent's turn. They stand all their creatures, choose a time zone, I'll choose the present. Um, draw a card, which they need to do, because we're just doing a test here. So, episodes. The solve number up here, which I showed you earlier, this is number seven, solve number. That means you need to do have a total of seven or more of support value. which is obviously the same for combat, this support value here. Use this number on each of your cards to solve the episode. So I need to have seven to solve the episode. There is also another scenario which is to solve an episode, which is in line with the TV show, where you can have a doctor and two assistants to solve an episode, regardless of what support values they have. Now, in the setup here, I can easily solve this episode. Although I've only got six support value here, I've got a doctor and I've got three assistants, so I can just choose two of them and solve the episode. So, all, just, all you need to do to solve an episode is side the creatures totaling the value of the solve number or a doctor and two assistants. And that episode is solved. Now, an example, perhaps we've only got Ace and the Doctor in the present zone. So when we play this, it means I can't solve it. Now, this is the rule that me and my friends had to kind of work out. If you, it's very rare for you to have, especially a high solve number of character creatures on table at any one time. Um, especially in the same zone, it's almost impossible. Um, so there's nothing in the rule book to say that you have to side just creatures from the zone you've chosen. So we took it as you could solve the, an episode with creatures from all time zones. So for example, I could side Doctor 1, Doctor 5 and Ace. So although there's more than one time zone used, that's how you can solve episodes and that's how we used to play. Um, because, I'll tell you why we did this. Because for example, if the episode took effect and all solvers humans in this zone are sided and they remain sided, which means that you if I had all humans in this zone, so for example, if these were human people, they'd all be 
sided and I wouldn't be able to play any other cards in that zone which means that I'd never ever be able to solve this episode without using other cards from other time zones so that's how we used to play so episode cards are the only real headache in this game obviously between you and your opponents you can choose not to play them um, but we used to, I mean, it's quite hard getting them into play anyway because of having the creatures in each zone. Um, but it's nice to see the episodes like depicted on the card form that you remember from the TV show. And most of them do have um, abilities on the cards that match the TV show, so um, it's quite nice to play with them. But you don't have to. Combat is perfectly fine for attacking your opponent and killing off the lives. Um, as you see on these ones, the solve numbers are 5, 6, um, I think 5 is the lowest maybe. Uh, I think the highest uh, episode card solve number is 9. I think that was Genesis of the Daleks, that was the highest one to solve. Another couple of the cards I haven't shown you, like flash cards are here. So they do have simple effects which have a short term effect on the game. So the Keeper of Traken, play one extra card, it speaks for itself, you just play that and play an extra card. The other type of cards we didn't get around to are resource cards. Um, these are again like equipment and things, you play these in the zones. So again you can only have a total of six cards in your time zone, uh, no more. Um, so these help you out, you side them to activate their abilities most of the time. Um, but this one is an innate ability, it doesn't have the infinity symbol next to it. If you can see that. So while this is in play, plus one support value to all your humans in the same zone. So if this is in play, this human would receive an extra one, so that would be a two support value creature. Um, I didn't mention on cards, on creature cards and resource cards, as I just said, this is what's called an innate ability. You don't have to side it to activate the ability. So on Ace, for example, we have an innate ability. They come into play as soon as the creature is played in the zone. So Ace's innate ability is plus one energy to Doctor Seven if in the same zone. So if Dr. Seven, Sylvester McCoy, was in the same zone as Ace, she'd instantly give him one energy and continue to give him one energy all the time that she is in play with him in the zone. So that's a nice little link between the doctors and assistants. They sometimes get it wrong in these cards. I mean, Nissa only gives support to Doctor number four, so Tom Baker. She's got no um, help towards Peter Davison, who she spent most of her time with in the TARDIS, which is a bit annoying. Um, but then you've got cards which are like Melanie Bush, who gives support to Doctor Six or Doctor Seven. So you can see they get it right with some cards, they don't get it right with others. So to win the game, obviously, the um, opponent has to make you take hits, which take out all your time cards. So once you've had six hits, um, like I showed you in that battle earlier, um, once the final time card is dis discarded, that is it. Your game is over and you have lost. So that's the game in a nutshell. I mean, it's, I hope I explained it okay for you. Um, obviously, you can read the rule book yourself if you manage to pick this up and see if any of the rules you interpret in different ways. But that's how we interpreted it as friends playing this game in the late 90s. So thank you for watching my video and um, please subscribe to my channel to see my future videos. And I'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Bye.